After leaving the Dardanelles and navigating through the Aegean Sea, our ship is crossing the Mediterranean and is about to approach Port Said, the northern gateway to the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal is the seaway shortcut between Europe and Asia, so ships traveling to and from these continents transit through the canal to save time and fuel cost. For a price, of course. Hello, everyone. So, a lot of you might be wondering, how much does it actually cost for a ship to transit the Suez Canal? Well, it depends on many factors like the ship type, gross tonnage, and net tonnage, to name a few. But to have a better idea of the approximate cost, there's a Suez Canal toll calculator which you can actually find online. Just Google it and it's probably the first thing that's going to pop up. Now of course, the final actual total cost will come from the Suez Canal Authority, but using this calculator, you will be able to get a fairly good estimate and all you have to do is input the details. So let's input the numbers for a typical bulk carrier and see what the breakdown will be. So we have the ship type bulk carrier has a draft of let's say 12.3 meters. The Suez Canal net tonnage, let's put it at 43,000 tons. The GRT at 45,000 tons. Of course, let's put laden or has cargo and let's put it at southbound. As you can see, this is the breakdown of all the fees and it has come to a total of about 225,000 US dollars. Whoa, that's a lot of money. But down in the bottom, they also included that there's a 65% toll rebate, which amounts to almost $124,000. So that would bring down the final estimated cost to around $101,000. That is still a lot of money. <laughs> now the ship itself is not actually the one who's going to pay for this. Cargo ships don't carry that kind of cash on board. <laughs> it's actually either the charters or the ship management who will arrange for the passage and pay for everything. So if passing through the canal will allow them to save a lot of money, they would definitely go for it. But how much do they actually save? Again, let's use the previous typical bulk carrier as an example. Now the cost of hiring or chartering a ship will depend on whether it is under a voyage charter or a time charter. The details are actually quite complex, but if we go down to the daily rate, I'd say bulk carriers are hired at an average of about Eight to ten thousand US dollars per day. Other ship types have different rates, of course, which actually makes it quite difficult to generalize how much expenses are. But there's one thing that I am very sure of though, and that is the fuel consumption. So let's just see how much savings a Suez Canal Transit will give us based on fuel consumption alone. Now, a ship of this size will typically consume around 30 metric tons of fuel per day, running at a speed of about 13.5 knots if laden with cargo. So it's going to cover an average distance of 324 nautical miles per day. Now let's say the ship is traveling from Istanbul, Turkey, going all the way to Mumbai, India. If the ship passes through the Suez Canal, that would take 3,745 nautical miles plus 120 miles through Suez Canal. Now running at 13.5 knots, that would take 12.1 days. Now, 12.1 days at 30 tons per day will cost 363 tons of fuel. Now, fuel at the market rate right now is about $320 per ton. So multiply that by 363 tons, you'll get 116,000 US dollars just for the fuel. 
Now add the canal fee of 101,000, you'll get a total of 217,000 US dollars if the ship passes through Suez Canal. Now if the ship doesn't pass through Suez, it will have to go all the way around the African continent. That's going to cover 12,111 miles from Istanbul to Mumbai and the voyage will take 37.4 days and will consume 1,122 tons of fuel. Again, at the rate of 320 per ton, that would cost around 359,000 US dollars for fuel. Now, if we compare the cost of both, passing through the Suez Canal will save the ship a total of about 141,000 US dollars for the fuel alone. So just for argument's sake, and this is just an estimate actually, uh, let's say the charter party agreement hires the ship for a rate of 9,000 US dollars per day. The bulk carrier is usually some, somewhere around that. So if the ship passes through Suez Canal, the voyage takes 12.1 days, multiply by 9,000 per day, that's going to amount to 108,000 US dollars or 109 which gives us a total cost of 326,000 US dollars. Now, if the ship doesn't pass through Suez Canal, the voyage will take 37.4 days. Multiply that by $9,000 per day, it will give you 336,000 US dollars. Combine that with the fuel cost, it would take a total of 695,000 US dollars. Now, compare that to the cost of passing through the Suez Canal, which was 326,000, we will get a total savings of 369,000 US dollars, which tells us that depending on the point of origin of the ship and its port of destination, there will be times that passing through Suez Canal will save a lot of money. Now, once again, just as a disclaimer, these figures that I have shown you are just based on estimates. The final costing, of course, will depend on the Suez Canal authorities and, of course, the charter party agreement, which we just gave an example of, just to give everyone an idea. Anyway, on the next episode, I'll be featuring our ship as it transits through Suez Canal. I'll show you the sights, what to expect, and a little bit of history and background, just as usual, of course. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.